the Shadow Throne. Talons. The Adeptes Custodes are demigods, the companions and bodyguards of the Emperor himself. The Sisters of Silence are gnolls, rare anti-psychic mutants who are trained in their paramilitary vigils to serve as the ultimate witch-killers. When deployed in concert, these elite paramilitary forces are known as the Talons of the Emperor. Since the earliest days of the Imperium, the Adeptus Custodes have stood guard upon the ramparts of the Imperial Palace and sallied forth into the galaxy to eliminate threats to the Golden Throne. Though they number but 10,000 in a galaxy of uncounted souls, each custodian is a masterful strategist and sublimely skilled warrior whose intellect, physique, and specialized war gear renders him the equal of even the most deadliest of foes. The Adeptes Custodes is a gathering of storied heroes unlike any other, and to know their wrath is to know death. When set against the golden radiance of the Adeptes Custodes, the Sisters of Silence are shadowy figures. They bear the mutation of the Pariah, which renders them as psychic blanks and casts a smothering pall across the souls and minds of all around them. Their organization was shattered many thousands of years ago and has but recently been reformed in Terra's defense. Yet, between their sublime martial skill to their absolute devotion to the Imperial cause and an innate ability to choke off even the most powerful witches' connection to the warp, they are every bit as heroic as the Custodian Guard. Amongst the ranks of the Adeptus Custodes, Blade Champions are afforded great honour. As a custodian achieves great deeds, he is awarded additional names that are inscribed in spiralling profusion upon the inner plates of his armour. It speaks volumes of the Blade Champions that their full names are also etched inedibly into the Oromite pages of the Tome Eternal that stands upon a lit plinth within the Emperor's own throne room. Blade Champions earn these honours for their martial conquest and legendary heroism. They are questers after the most terrible foes. Master duelists who can appraise an enemy's ranks in a heartbeat and select the most threatening targets. Once a blade champion sets his gaze on such a foe, nothing but death will prevent him from employing his specialist fighting styles and archaeotech weaponry to ensure its swift destruction. Blade champions often accrue unofficial bands of companions from amidst the ranks of the Adeptes Custodes and Silent Sisterhood both. These comrades trust their champion to lead them into the most perilous and vital of battles, in whose prosecution they can best serve the Emperor by annihilating his foes. It was such a gathering that followed the blade champion Astareth's Cavillian into the shadows beneath Nedulus to ensure the capture of the Genesteel of Patriarch and the annihilation of its innermost brood coven. Gene Stealers are vanguard organisms for the alien swarms of the Terridid High Fleets. When one of these creatures infiltrates a human civilization, it employs gruesome biogenetic implantation and psychic mind control to turn the population to its cause. So do Imperial worlds fall from the inside, laid low by sudden uprisings of fanatical brood hybrids. A single gene stealer is all that is required to trigger a cult infestation, metamorphosizing into a larger and more powerful being known as the gene stealer Patriarch. This seed of corruption sees to the creation of brood cycle after brood cycle. Some waves of its followers are highly specialized. The Primus, with its instinctive its strategic brilliance and innate abilities as a warrior and a general, the Magus, powerful psyche masterful manipulator, who serves the Patriarch as Grand Vizier, the Reductus Saboteur, who serves as an exemplar of resistance by fashioning powerful explosive devices and waging campaigns of sabotage and destruction to bring down the machineries of the oppressors. The list goes on. Other waves are twisted monsters, half tyrannid and half human in nature. 
Others still resemble original human gene stock closely enough that they can move amongst the people of the world without detection, serving as infiltrators for their patriarch master. Regardless of their nature, all gene stealer cultists venerate the void traveling deities they know as the Star Children. It is their belief that these beings will hear the cult's prayers, bear witness to their eventual uprising against the hated oppressors, and come from between the stars to welcome them into a final beautiful state of ascension where all are one. The truth is more tragic and rather more horrible. The star children are in fact the Tyranids, who appear able to home in on the Gestalt psychic beacon formed by the unknowing gene stealer cults. The wondrous apotheosis to which the cultists offer their lives and deaths is simply consumption by these locust like alien swarms. The Patriarch's promise is a hollow one, for while it is true the Tyranids do employ the biomass they strip from worlds to fashion new waves of warrior organisms, it seems doubtful indeed that the cult faithful will know anything but a horrifying death from the process. The gene stealer cultists know nothing of this. Even were they warned, the biocompulsion within their genetic makeup renders them adoring slaves to the Patriarch's will regardless. So do they strive to infiltrate every level of the world's labor castes and armed forces, its organs of governance, faith and defense. The cult spreads like a terminal disease, stockpiling material and laying plans against the eventual day of ascension. This uprising, when it comes, sees the still loyal defenders overthrown from within, surprised by the sudden betrayal of comrades, servants and masters alike. <laughs>